All right. So our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you. But don't follow their example. For they don't practice what they preach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So... Today is All Saints Day. And All Saints Day is when we're supposed to think about not only the saints that have gone before, but those that still walk here. That's uh, all of us that are Christians, okay? It's, it's, about, it's supposed to be a reminder that we're all in this together. It's supposed to be like heaven, where all the saints come together and, and, and sing God's, you know, praises. And uh, believe it or not, that scripture in Matthew is actually from the lectionary. And I was wondering how it goes together. And it makes sense. You know, during Jesus' time, the Pharisees and... and the teachers, it was their job to interpret what the Bible said so people could understand it, trying to translate what the Bible meant. But much like religious authorities now, sometimes it gets translated, and it's right the way it gets translated, but then actions don't necessarily say what we're told, you know? Like a church. We talk about love your neighbor, right? In church, we talk about come to Jesus as you are. In church, we talk about everybody is equal in God's eyes. And we'll say that out loud. But do our actions really uphold that? I mean, how many of you have ever been in church where... Somebody will say we're all equal, but because their family had been there a lot longer and they've got more money going into the tithing plate, they're a little bit more equal, right? Or we talk about forgiveness and loving our neighbor, but we want to hold it against our neighbor that they didn't cut their grass when we wanted it to, you know, so the grass is a little tall. And as a church, you know, on All Saints Day, I want to think about as saints, are we celebrating God together the way we're supposed to? And it's, are we actually practicing what we preach? Or are we like the Pharisees being hypocrites? Now the church as a whole, there, we have some problems in it with that right now, don't we? There are members of the church that are left-leaning and supporting Democrats and Biden, and they're being, they're being hateful, calling anyone who is right-leaning and supporting Trump or anyone else Nazis and bigots and racists, whether they are or not. And at the same time, we have people on the right supporting Trump that are being hate-filled. And these are Christians, not just politicians, not just random people, but these are Christians. And they will bash and put down anybody because they support the left. Is this what the church is all about? I mean, are we doing that? As a church, are we doing that? As, as West Rock and Haim United Methodist, are we doing that? Are we preaching kindness but being hateful? Are we... What about this one? Are we preaching, putting our faith in God, but in everyday life our faith is in money and the government and things of the world? Are we being hypocrites? 
are we making church about worshiping God, or are we making church, are we making church about being ruled? That was a question I had before I started really talking this morning. Is it? If somebody comes walking up in the back right now, and I know the answer because I've walked by most of your cars and I know how most of y'all are dressed. But, you know, if they walked up in, in jeans and a t-shirt, would they feel comfortable? And right now, it's pretty obvious. Everybody's feeling comfortable pretty much. I'm like the only one that has to wear a tie to church anymore or something. But, huh? Milton's over there talking some junk. But, not today when we're all out in the parking lot. But what about when we're back up in the sanctuary? As a church, is somebody going to feel welcome when they walk in? Are we going to make them feel welcome? I talked to a, a lady a couple weeks ago, and she was raised Methodist. She went into a Methodist church, and I'm not going to say which one, and I'm not going to say where, but I will say it was here in North Carolina. And everybody acted welcoming to him during a church service. But the church was all people that had been in that church for 30, 40, 50 years. And she said as soon as the service was over during a fellowship, meetings, meals, or even out in the parking lot, it's like they were invisible and didn't exist. She stopped going to church because of that. Now I'm going to point out, I know because I was wearing jeans the first time I came to West Rockingham and people chased me down in the park a lot so I wouldn't leave and I'd come have a meal with everybody. So I know as a general rule we are, but we, we are practicing what we preach, but is there any spot that we're not? You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. I'm writing to God's church at Corinth to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. You know, I want us to think about it, and it's not, I'm not meaning to beat anybody down this morning with, you know, are we hypocrites? You're hypocrites. We're all going to hell. That's not what I'm saying this morning. But pride is the biggest mistake we make. Thinking we're good enough. Thinking we're following Jesus enough. Thinking we're doing enough. I can tell you, I don't. I know I don't do enough. I know that there are days that when I'm walking around at Rockingham, People do not look at me and immediately see a Christian. I work hard to try to love people, but I know there are days when I'm walking around a town, people see angry Paul Haber, a person. I know because you guys have seen it in this church when I'm focused. I look angry sometimes. Oh, Lord, he's giving me gray hair right now. You know, I know that there are days when I don't want to be around people. There are days I don't want to answer a phone when somebody's calling me. Even though I know if that person's calling me, then it's something important. You ever have days like that? You know, nobody, you know somebody's not going to call you unless they need you. But then when they need you, you're not in the mood, so you don't want to answer it. I love hearing people laugh loud enough where I can hear them. They're like, oh yeah. You know, this is, this is all saints day. Sunday is about celebrating the saints. But the reminder, I want to remind you, all the saints that go before us, you know, the Christians that we talk about, the Mother Teresa's, you know, I, I throw out a bunch, a bunch of names, but most of y'all wouldn't know who they are, like Thomas Aquinas, you know, but we look at it and we talk about how great Christians they were. And it's good to remember that, but they're no more or less than we are. They were still human. I'll bet you there were days when Mother Teresa wanted to strangle people. <laughs> I 
This is, this is the day when we remember that they were human. We don't worship them, we don't pray to them, we don't reach out to them, but we do remember them. And when we remember, don't remember their faults. Because I'll tell you, when you look at televangelists and preachers, they do great, people love them until they make a mistake, and then that's all anybody remembers, isn't it? It doesn't matter how many people, how many people they brought and led to Christ. It doesn't remember, matter how much of God's word they preached. It only matters that they made a mistake. In Matthew, what did it say this morning? The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey what they teach you. How many of you have lost somebody that explained God to you? It's okay to be sad, but remember what they taught you. Remember, just because they made mistakes or were imperfect doesn't mean that when they told you about God, they weren't telling you the truth. The whole body of Christ is supposed to uplift each other. And not only we look to the past and, and, and stuff people taught us in the past, but look around you. Look right now, just look around you in the parking lot. As dysfunctional as a church family as we are, everybody in this parking lot is able to uplift you when you're hurt. Everybody in this parking lot is able to pray for you when you need healing. Anybody that's missing out of this parking lot weakens God's family a little bit, doesn't it? You've got to remember that. Think about our church family that's not here right now. Think about our church family that can't leave their homes. We need to pray for them. We need to uplift them. We need to ask them to uplift us. Okay. It's okay to be a to make mistakes. It's okay to be, but it's not okay to turn our back on God. And if we're turning back on the rest of our church family, that's what we're doing, isn't it? So let's not like let's not be hypocrites, guys. And I'm not calling anybody hypocrites. So don't get all offended, go home and cry, and then call your friends and gossip about how mean the preacher is. That's not what I'm saying. I just want us to remember today. Remember our church family. The ones that have gone. And the ones that are stuck in their houses. The ones that moved to the beach. The ones that moved to the mountains. The ones that live out in the middle of nowhere that we don't remember. As a church, let's reach out to them. Not just remember them with love, but let's show them that love too. Okay? Let's pray. Praise God. Sometimes we think we're, we're we're doing good. Sometimes we think we're being good Christians and we're following your rules and we're sharing your word with people. But then we forget about our family. We, we forget about other Christians that are struggling. We forget about the Christians that can't come to meet us where we are. We forget about the ones that are homebound or the ones that are sick or the ones that are in the hospital. And we use the excuse like right now that we can't go visit them in the hospital, but we can still call God. Lord, help us. Help us to be the children that your son wants us to be. Help us to be disciples and a family the way Jesus taught us. God, help us to be strong enough to ignore the world and what it's trying to do to bring us away from you and just focus on you. God, we ask this in your holy name. Amen.